Well, welcome to Three Minute Theology with Joel. Um, one of the most important doctrines inside of scripture is the doctrine of the Trinity. I was having a conversation with a friend the other day and we we're trying to navigate like, how do we describe, how do we explain what the Trinity actually is? And, and she began to give me an analogy. Uh, and here's the deal. Sometimes analogies, they just sadly break down. And so she said, Joel, I think the Trinity may be kind of like water. You know, how water can be water, but it can also be vapor and it can also also be ice. See, three things, but one thing. Um, but the, the problem with water as an example of the Trinity is that water can't be ice simultaneously. Ice can't be vapor simultaneously. You see, each uh, form has a mode and it changes. And sadly, that kind of speaks to a little bit of heresy. We don't want to talk about modalism when it comes to the Trinity. So how do we describe the Trinity? Well, the, the most basic and fundamental conviction that the ancient people of God, the Israelites, and really the people of God throughout the ages have always believed is that God is one. And while God is one, he's also distinct in three persons. So Joel, how does this work? Well, Hebrews 1.3 says that Jesus Christ is the exact imprint of the nature of God. That Greek word, nature, it actually speaks to essence or substance. So this is what we mean. We mean that God is one in essence and substance. This also means that God is distinct in person. So how does that work? Well, God is the Son, God is the Holy Spirit, and God is the Father. However, they're distinct in persons because the personhood of the Son is not the Father, and the Father is not the Holy Spirit. This speaks to the distinct operations of each of the um, persons of the Godhead. So the Father sends the Son, the Son comes in the incarnation, and the Holy Spirit is sent to empower and equip the saints for the work of ministry. So we have this basic principle. It's actually quite marvelous that, that God is one in essence, the Greek word is hypostasis, that, that, that they are one and yet they're also distinct in persons. I want us to pause on this, that God relates to humanity personally, emotionally, that he has a longing and a will and a desire for you and I, and yet everything about God is one in unity, that God is unified. And so when we talk about the Trinity, we can summarize it this way. God is one in essence and yet distinct in persons.